Hello to my Earth signs Capricorn, Taurus and Virgo. Welcome to the Sagittarius New Moon. You'll find the timestamps for your rising signs listed below. Hello Capricorn Rising, welcome to your horoscope for the Sagittarius New Moon happening on December the 13th at 10.32am if you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me. So that's Wednesday morning. Now I highly recommend that if you are going to do your New Moon rituals, I would suggest that you do it the night before on Tuesday or get up early, early morning on Wednesday before the sun rises and light some candles and work with the feelings that show up for you. And because Sagittarius rules your 12th house, which is your unconscious world, it's the parts of you that are very private, very internal, that have a lot to do with your sense of spirituality, but maybe in a way that you can't quite articulate. There will be messages that are sort of arriving for you, I imagine, at this new moon, that it might be great to do some automatic writing. If you've ever done that before, it's a great technique that many loved ones have given me over time to do. And in my stubborn way, I have sometimes and I haven't other times. But you just sort of sit there with a journal and a pen and just write. Don't think about it, just write. That would be a great way to commune with a, a new moon in your 12th house because it is so private. Privacy is the major word here. Magic is probably a good word too. It's always magical at a new moon and a full moon. We know this really well. What's happening in Sagittarius is informing and speaking to quite tenderly what's happening in Aries, in your fourth house of your home, your roots and your ancestral lines. So what I'm thinking to myself Capricorn rising is that some of these conversations that you are going to automatically have might speak to some gentler, tender spots around your homelands, your bloodlines. First of all, the sun and the moon are at 20 degrees of Sagittarius in your 12th house and they are speaking very kindly, throwing out a line of support to the dragon's head in Aries. So I've set you up for this before, but we know that for the next 18 months or so, there's going to be this feeling of urgency around your home, your roots, perhaps your ancestral lines. There may be um, events and occurrences that show up around these topics that feel really urgent and feel that the time is now to deal with this. When I think about Aries, I think about cardinal fire and a match. I think about radical self-confidence and individual uh, direction. So when aligning these two things together, there might be something about you standing up or standing your own ground in regard to where you came from or regard to those sorts of structures. It might be a great feeling of pride and growth around the privacy and the roots that you've been able to develop for yourself, that you've been able to grow for you and you alone, separate to what was offered or what, what was the reality of your, your ancestral home. There might be some other things that feel a bit more tender because as well as that lovely line of support, there's another one. So at 13 degrees of Sagittarius is the planet Mars, which is a shield and a sword. There's protection there. So there's protection for you to journey in the unconscious world. Also another line of support with the asteroid Chiron at 15 degrees of Aries. So there's two connecting threads. There's two lines here at this new moon and two topics that might inform one another. If Mars is being brave for you, then Chiron is showing you some of this unconscious wounding, some of these pain points, maybe, around home, roots and ancestry. There's a lovely conversation here that's happening quite internally and quite privately for you at this time, Capricorn rising. So Chiron takes 50 years to move around the zodiac, 
they actually entered Aries in for a couple of months in 2018 and then full time from 2019, the beginning of 2019. And they'll be in there until 2026. So this isn't to say that it's going to be agonizing or it has been in regards to building a home or creating a safe place to land for you. It does point to markers on the calendar. If you can look back and think about 2019 and what was occurring for you around your idea of roots and ancestry and home life, of privacy, and what conversation is being gently encouraged for you to have now. The sign Sagittarius loves to learn and loves to seek out knowledge and to sort of give context for our lives. They like to find the meaning in things. And so for Sagittarius to be in your 12th house, there's something really deeply resonantly spiritual here that feels perhaps maybe a little bit different to how you uh, externally work, depending on what else is going on in your chart. But it does feel like a really beautiful altar of candles in your hidden world. So go with that. Light the candles like Sagittarius would. Feel the sort of like power of the silence of a candle. I just, I've always loved fire ever since I was a little kid. I just get so hypnotized by it because we know how dangerous it is. We know how powerful it is. It's the giver of life and the taker of life, you know. But in a candle, it seems contained and it seems silent. And it seems like if we listen, we can hear what it's trying to tell us. So maybe you can take some of that imagery into your new moon ritual too. If you're the kind of person that's longing to expand upon your spiritual practices or learn more about different philosophies around, you know, consciousness or the afterlife or whatever, whatever journey you wish to go down, ask yourself first in silence. Because there's a lot of information that we can really receive and we don't say anything. And there's a lot of people that you'll feel that you don't trust. And there's probably a lot of caginess around that too, which I would probably encourage, you know. You don't want to get let up a garden path. And you won't. You're a Capricorn soul. So that won't happen. But if this sort of yearning is sort of growing, and if you can feel this conversation sort of emerging, I mean, obviously the month, the time of the year, a lot of cultures families, ancestral lines do come together to celebrate at this time, do come back into contact. Perhaps if you're not close by to them, you may have found yourself around the bloodline or around the ancestral home, and that could be triggering for you. Perhaps you're not there, and that's also triggering for you too. You see that this is, the astrology is sort of echoing the time and place. It's really lovely and probably like valuable conversations for us all to have around the pain points, around our ancestry, and also the, the happiness and the love that's there too. The love that we can create in our own fourth house, our own home, our own sense of safety. Chiron's really lovely. It reminds me a lot of Sagittarius. I'm sure I've told you the story of the wounded healer a thousand times, so I won't bore you with it again. But you remember Chiron's inability to heal his own wounds. He was available and ready to heal the wounds of others. Learned as much as he could about the natural world, about the cosmic world, to bring comfort to other folks. But in physical pain from that poison arrow, there was nothing that could salve that wound. And so that's why when we look to Chiron in astrology, we do look at it as an opportunity to heal and perhaps a healing that takes place that is sort of not your sole responsibility to face. Chiron does encourage us to seek comfort 
in the company of others <clears throat> and to kind of accept the help from other people when we're finding it really difficult. So that's just something to think about too. Aries would want to do it themselves and that's the tricky thing with Chiron and Aries maybe. There's this like, no, I'll do it myself, it's fine. Don't worry about me. But that will just stop you in your tracks. You need help. I hope that you recognise that you can ask for that help. Capricorn rising. I'm going to get you some tarot. And as I shuffle them, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Mercury because there's a little tricky customer that's happening on the same day as this new moon in Sagittarius. So the moon happens in the morning. Lovely, beautiful, solemn, quiet, internal, deep, healing potential. And then in the evening, Mercury stations retrograde again. So backwards movement. Mercury has just entered your first house. So Mercury is in Capricorn at this new moon. Mercury will retrograde back into Sagittarius over the coming weeks. So whatever is coming to you, it might be a lovely um, message from Mercury to sit with it for a time. Not everything has to be action straight away or not everything has to be put on the table. But if there's things that you're sort of gleaning about what we've been discussing or if there's things that are separate to the fourth house but more to do with your um, magical prowess, with your deep inner spirituality, your own rhythms, the own way, the own, your own rituals, the own ways that, that you have um, developed over time to engage and in, in, in encounter your, your spirit guides or Mother Nature or whoever it is that you worship. Take the rest of this year to absorb, to steep like a tea bag in that new information. Get really flavoursome. Don't have to sort of act upon it straight away. I got you some lovely cards that are really sweet and really beautiful and really hopeful. You got a king and a queen. Queen of Pentacles is someone who's really great with reality, really great with a sense of grounding, really good at grounding you as well, bringing you back to earth. There's a real sort of generosity with the Queen of Pentacles and there's sort of like a joy with the bounty, you know, with the skill of learning the natural rhythms of the world and being able to grow things, being able to tend to new growth and being able to cultivate from established growth, those sorts of things. They're very generous and they're very, uh, they've got some good advice as well. The King of Wands is someone who is really vital and magical and sexy and powerful and confident and can imbue you with those sorts of qualities too. So there's two folks here, they don't have to be sort of in relationship to one another, but they definitely sort of like surrounding you at this time because there might be some things that have brought up a little bit of self-defense. As you've listened to my voice, you might be like, mm, no, or like back off, like I'll do it alone. Like That's sort of a feeling that's sort of showing up in the tarot right now. It's a very noble card the seven of wands it does speak to you know magical defense and standing your ground standing up for yourself fending off those that are sort of in combat with you but you're not doing this by yourself you do have two very strong very potent supportive energies behind you right now capricorn rising and it's helping your sun to rise remember that part of you that was so optimistic that was so alert and aware and vibrant and available. You might want to look at your birth chart and look at your sun sign as well. If you're a Capricorn rising, that's not to say that your, your sun could be anywhere. So have a look at your sun sign too and think about the qualities of that sign. For example, like a sun in um, Aquarius is someone who's really vibrant of mind and really... Um, able to problem solve and to innovate so think about yourself when you were a kid often there's um, a few thoughts on the topic but little children will often show their astrology really quite clearly before they're 
um, before their predilections are infiltrated by, you know, the rules or by, you know, their training or by their caregivers. You know, perhaps there's some things that can be stifled when when you're younger or it's not always your caregivers, it's just the world at large. You know, we sort of learn how to try and receive love and acceptance, don't we? And that sometimes leads us to editing parts of ourselves. But maybe think about your sun sign, think about that part of you, think about the brightness of you and think about the version of you that existed all those years ago. How bright you were, how amiable you were, how like ready for like fun you were. That is a nice way to sort of end this story with these wounds in in the ancestral world, Capricorn rising. Whoever these folks are, keep them around. King of Wands, Queen of Pentacles. They've got your back. They've got your back and hopefully they can sort of ease your shoulders a bit as far as the defences go too. That's your reading. <laughs> Much love to you, babe. If you're still here with me, put a horsey in the comments, please. A horse head or a, a, I think there's a racehorse. Whatever, just something in honour of Sagittarius and, and of Chiron too. We're working with two centaurs here that actually have a lot to do with one another. I do like to develop my definition of Sagittarius on the basis of what Chiron can teach us because I believe they're really linked. I can read your birth chart at umaruby.com. They look like this. I'll draw them out for you and read it to you and then post you the hard copy so you've got that to put in your collection. Um, you can subscribe to my horoscope work here at buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby. And you can also throw some tip money in the jar there if you're feeling festive. Um, if you'd like to give the gift of Uma during this holiday season, if you're in the mode of buying presents for other folks and you don't want it to be so consumable, maybe buy them a birth chart reading. You can send me an email at U R O K at umaruby.com and we can chat about it there and I can email you a voucher for them to use whenever they like. Much love to you. I'll speak to you in two weeks and we'll talk about a full moon in Cancer, the day that Chiron stations direct. So we'll talk about Chiron again. We'll talk about Cancer, the full moon, lots of tears on the 27th of December. After it all, we're driving into the skid, kids. But, you know, happy holidays. <laughs> Much love. Bye. Hello, Taurus Rising. Welcome to your horoscope for the Sagittarius New Moon, happening on December the 13th at 10.32 a.m. if you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me. So that's Wednesday morning. So this is a new moon. So it's an evening to create a beautiful, magical space for yourself and to make some wishes. So if you wanted to do that the night before on Tuesday, I would highly recommend. Or if you wanted to get up early on Wednesday morning before the sun rises and do it then, even better. The exactitude of this doesn't really matter when communing with the moon. It, it, it will work as long as you, well, it will work. <laughs> no rules. We're, we're entering into a really beautiful, gentle, tender space. When we speak about Sagittarius for you, Taurus rising, we do talk about your eighth house, which is the house of our resources interwoven with other people. It's the house of things like soul contracts and the house of things like grief and lo loss and learning to say goodbye to those that we love so sincerely and so deeply. So let's go gently together as we discuss this and what better costume to wear than that of Sagittarius. I've got my candle going as always, but it's really pertinent for me to maybe remind you about the magic of candlelight. And perhaps at your new moon ritual, it would be really beautiful for you to light some candles. In fact, light some candles whenever you need to commune with your spirit guides or with yourself, with the universe, with the galaxy. Sagittarius teaches us so much about the power of fire. You'd think, and it's true, 
that Aries and Leo both do as well. Aries is cardinal fire, so it is something like a match that's struck. Leo is fixed fire, so there's something about a bonfire, the power and ferociousness of the element. When we come to Sagittarius, immutable fire, we come to the mastery of the element. We come to an altar of light, an altar of candles, and we feel the silence of fire. It's stunning. And there's a reason why we light candles for all sorts of different reasons. We light them to celebrate. We light them to make love. We light them to send people home or guide them back home. Light a candle, light many of them at this new moon in Sagittarius, Taurus rising. And by that candle light, perhaps you can start to make some lists or you can journal about your feelings around grief. You can write to folks that you love very much that are no longer here, things that you'd like to update them on, goings on in your own life, things about your strength throughout this last period of time, things about what you're learning about yourself and how that's evolving. That's going to be really lovely. You could also think about your resources being merged with others. You could think about that sort of collaborative effort that the 8th house can talk about. However, I've got an inkling that at this new moon, it'd be really lovely to talk with those that you love, that you can't talk to with your voice. So the sun and the moon are at 20 degrees of Sagittarius, and they are forming a very supportive trine with the dragon's head in Aries, over in your 12th house of your unconscious world, your spirituality that is very private and internal. So I think that this is a beautiful time to light those candles and write those letters or speak those words. Also, the planet Mars is in Sagittarius too. So there's a bravery here. There's a shield and there's a sword. There's a protection here for you in the grief house, Taurus rising. And that's also shooting a line of support over to Aries, this time with the asteroid Chiron. Now you've probably heard me talk heaps about Chiron. It's um, one of the mythologies and planetary bodies that I have really been working with a lot over the past 12 months. Chiron on my birth chart is right in line with my IC point at the bottom of my chart, so my marker point for, for home. And so I've got a lot to learn from Chiron about things like ancestral trauma and things like the pain points and wounding around a home environment. And so I like to work with Chiron whenever the configuration says that I should, and it's saying that I should at this time. If I haven't told you the story, I'll be brief. Chiron was a centaur. Chiron was a child of the gods. Chiron was gifted eternal life. And so use that time to good use, put, put that time to good use, I should say. They learned all about herbalism and the natural healing qualities of the earth. They learned about uh, philosophy and guidance. Folks would come to them and listen and they would heal with storytelling. Chiron was a great archer. Chiron had so many skills that they gleaned over their eternal life. They became a master at a lot of things, much like Sagittarius. I like to think about the correlations between Sagittarius and Chiron. I think it's a very sincere one. Not everyone will agree with me. That's, that's natural. However, I like to think that Chiron and Sagittarius have a lot in common. They're both centaurs, after all. The story goes that Chiron was shot with a poison arrow and couldn't heal that wound for themselves. They were in agony. This pain just wouldn't go away, and nothing that they learned about the natural world, nothing that they learned in their long life could heal their own suffering. And so they pleaded to the gods to set their soul free, 
and eventually they did. And so Chiron's spirit was set free from the body and the constellation Sagittarius was installed by Zeus in our cosmos in honour, in memoriam of Chiron. Now, as I said, not everyone will agree with me that that is the correlation. Remind me to tell you about the mythology, the author of that story at the next horoscope. I haven't written it down, but I'll remind me and I will. It, the significations of Chiron texture and inform my understanding of the sign Sagittarius. I've known a lot of Sagittarians in my time and what the commonality, the common theme that I have put together is that they're all seeking knowledge. They're all longing to learn as much as they can and there's an adventurous spirit to each and every single one of them and it is with the intent to provide some sense of comfort and healing through understanding or through an example of bravery. And for that, I love every Sagittarian that I've come across. So all of that bravery, all of that story is being sort of peppered through your 12th house right now, Taurus rising. In fact, Chiron entered Aries for a couple of months in 2018, I think from April to September, but then was full time from 2019 and will be there until 2026. So we're sort of, we've still got the third chapter of this Chiron and Aries story. For you, it's very private. For you, it's very spiritual. For you, it's very magical, but it's something kind of hidden and perhaps something that you don't have the outward vocabulary for, nor do you want it. But it's deep work deep healing work that mars in your eighth house of grief is shielding you and protecting you in order to get so vulnerable i really like it taurus rising i think it's really gorgeous and i'm going to get you some tarot cards to further describe this story to you but i will say that we've got to prepare ourselves for some miscommunications coming up. So on the same day as this Sagittarius new moon, Mercury will station retrograde in Capricorn. And so that means that Mercury, the planet that does bring information, that does share information with us, we, some, so we, we, we absorb it and we repeat it, they will have stationed retrograde. And so whenever a planet looks as though it's going backwards in the sky, it's not, but it's just the way that the speeds are sort of, you know, you're driving next to a car. That's a good um, analogy that I um, heard recently uh, via Chani Nicholas, my favorite astrologer. But she was describing how the image of when you're driving in a, on a highway and you're going forwards and the car next to you appears to be going backwards but it's just because you're going a little bit of a further speed. You're, they're not going backwards, they're still going in the same direction. But from your perspective, it looks like they're going backwards. That's a good way to think about retrogrades. The planet doesn't do a U-turn, but our speed is picking up, and so it looks as though it's got moving backwards in the sky. In astrology, that means hold your horses. Do you know everything? Should you speak on this? Should they speak on this? Can I just get clarification about this? So that's something to think about. What I like is that at this moon, Mercury uh, will have not stationed retrograde. It will be eight hours after, and they are actually forming trine support with Jupiter in your first house, which is very expansive, which is very optimistic. And so Capricorn is your ninth house of spirituality and lessons in that topic. The twelfth is very private, unconscious sort of connection and understanding. The ninth is quite formal. The ninth is quite um, full of education. So maybe I'm not sure if you're on some sort of spiritual journey yourself or if you're learning as much as you can and you're sort of starting to put two and two together. There might be some things that are occurring to you in your studies with mentors and the like. And so whatever it is that you're coming towards, 
in your understanding. Give yourself some grace for the rest of this year. Don't feel too urgently that you need to put it out there. In fact, it might be great to sort of like reread the chapter, you know, rest on it a little bit. It doesn't have to be published by the end of the year. Don't give yourself that deadline. But definitely uh, feel the... Um, feel that short circuit maybe it's kind of like it, it does if things go wrong too i'm not sure if you've um seen your like technology bite the dust during mercury retrograde or emails weren't sent and just things like that communications get bogged down you may have forgotten to pay your phone bill for a while something like that so yeah no rush you've got nothing to hide Taurus rising. You've got nothing to hide. The magical life, the silver life, runs through your veins. You've got powers that you didn't recognize that you had before, but they're rapidly coming to you. Maybe that's that sort of Mercury in the ninth. You're sort of like, I think I've got it. I'm getting somewhere with this. It's setting you up for a lovely feeling of uh, accomplishment is what I feel. You've taken the offer from spirit and you're taking the offer now in your grief house. You're engaging in those conversations. You're recognizing that time is sort of like this and that we don't ever have to fully get over and move on from something. It will come back. The resilience that we can develop when it comes back makes the difference. And that's what you're learning now through the work that you do and through the way that you spend your days, through the way that you relate to the animal kingdom and to nature. That's the silver life. That's magic. And that's at the center of your reading. The judgment card isn't here to admonish us or make us feel guilty. The judgment card arrives and says... Don't forget the silver life. And the star has nothing to hide. The star knows exactly what to do. The star has come here for a purpose. The star has come here to teach us about life and about love. They've got a great capacity to see how folks and systems are suffering. And they have the answers. And they're completely without armour, without clothes, they're naked, gently moving the water of life and of love, gently, gently, gently. And that's your stability, that's your kind of legacy perhaps that you can look forward to. Maybe there's someone in your environment too that's kind of feels really grounded and that feels really centred and available for you. It's an earth sign, so are you. There's something about accomplishment, as I said, but there's something about a sort of gregariousness too. There's a generosity with the King of Pentacles. They know that everything regenerates. They know how to grow things. They know how to share that around. This time alone is valuable. <clears throat> Another earth sign, different texture. I think of Virgo when I see the hermit. So I think of practical strategy. <laughs> I think of someone who really needs to get to the bottom of something and to figure out the system. And I see someone that needs that time alone to create the magic that you're making in your silver life your brilliant life, Taurus rising, takes time and it takes patience. And sometimes it's a solo enterprise too. Sometimes you need that time alone to fully understand and to focus on the task at hand. I find that sometimes. I do lament sometimes. I have been far less um, available socially for years now. I used to be highly available and I've needed this time to focus 
and to really kind of decipher what messages I'm being given from the natural world around me and otherwise from the galaxy, from spirit land and to articulate it in a way that suits my temperament and suits my skill base. But it's not a rush. The culture right now, obviously, everything feels like a rush. And unfortunately, when working in online content world, there's always a rush feeling. But hopefully, as time moves on, I'll find my rhythm and hopefully you are finding your rhythm too. That that time alone, that time in solitude, is not because you're hiding. It's because you're working. And if it is because you're hiding, you'll know the difference. And you'll know when it's time to come out and get the sunshine on your face and to recommune. Because it is nice to spend good time with good people. Virgo's great at discerning what that definition is. You don't owe anybody your visibility. You'll go where your heart is taking you and where your magical silver life is taking you. So, Sagittarius new moon, light your candles. Say your prayers. Have conversations that you need to have. And I'll speak to you in two weeks and we're going to talk about the full moon in Cancer, which will be highly emotional, no doubt. It's happening on the 27th of December, the same day that Chiron, our wounded healer, stations direct. So there'll be more to speak about on that topic and I'll be ready and available to you. Thank you, Taurus Rising. If you're still here with me, can you put a horse in the comments, please, in honour of Chiron and in honour of Sagittarius? Uh, you can support my work here at buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby. There's an option to subscribe for 10 Australian dollars a month if that's something that you can afford. You can also throw some money in the tip jar over there. Uh, I can read your birth chart, which looks something like this, over at umaruby.com. So head to the bookings page and you can set yourself a time with me, for me to draw your chart and read it to you. And I'll send it to you after you get the hard copy as well. If you'd like to gift such a thing to a loved one, we are in gift giving season right now. And if you wanted your gifts to be less consumable, then you can give me as a present. If you'd like, send me an email at u r o k at umaruby.com and we can chat it out there. Much love to you, Taurus Rising. Take good care of yourself. The 8th house and the 12th house are very gentle private parts. So you just go gently, light your candles and say your prayers. Hello Virgo Rising. Welcome to your horoscope for the Sagittarius New Moon. Happening on the 13th of December at 10.32am if you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me. So that's Wednesday morning. So you can the night before on Tuesday, do your new moon ritual, or you can wake up early, early on Wednesday morning before the sun rises to do it. Um, I would highly recommend that you do it in darkness and that you light yourself some candles. When I think about Sagittarius, I always think about candles and the magic that they imbue and embody. Aries is a match. Aries starts things off. Aries is strikes and is ready to start the journey. Leo is a bonfire. Leo is fixed fire. They contain and hold the heat. And Sagittarius is mutable fire, it gives way to the next season in calm and quiet and beauty and majesty. So when I look at your birth chart, Virgo rising, Sagittarius is your fourth house. That's your home, that's your roots, that's your ancestors. That's the most private part of the chart, the part where we should feel safe, where we should feel 
welcome and we should feel a sense of home. And a new moon in this house is an opportunity to make wishes, to ask for grounding, to ask for privacy, to ask for peace at home. It's going to be a nice night and it's going to be a moment that is much required at this time to recalibrate and to recenter yourself and to light some candles for your ancestors too. We light candles for all sorts of reasons, don't we? We light them to celebrate. We light them to make love. We light them to guide people home. So light your candles with the Sagittarius new moon, Virgo rising. There's some support that's occurring at this time before some stickiness, but we'll get there. The sun and the moon are at 20 degrees of Sagittarius and they're forming support trine with another fire sign with Aries and the dragon's head at 23 degrees. So over the next 18 months, we know we're sort of prepping ourselves to enter our eighth house our eighth house of contracts, of our resources interwoven with others, our grief zone, how we learn to say goodbye to those that we love so dearly. So this is fertile ground. And this moon might be a great sort of support for the journey that we're about to take in that place, Virgo rising. I like this synergy between the two. I like this conversation. I like this moment of silence. I like this quiet time to light candles and to pray. Sagittarius loves to pray. They love hope. So do I. <laughs> Didn't always. I really do now. And I find it really valuable. And I find it so powerful, the amount of silent praying that's occurring right now told this story to someone else I'll tell it to you I remember when I was little <clears throat> and I remember learning about um, the Vietnam War protests and things like that and I remember thinking that that was the past when I was a, a little child and thinking in the olden days this is you know and I think would think about all the different wars and things in in the olden days <clears throat> time before I could possibly begin to conceive and thinking that's the past this is the future we're evolving we're moving through and I also have been thinking a lot about the amount of time that we've all prayed for peace in our lives. I'm 40 in a month, and so that's 40 solid years of praying for peace. And I'll continue to do so until I die. I can't imagine what would happen if we all stopped praying for peace. Sagittarius prays for peace. Your ancestors prayed for peace. We will pray for peace together with our candles, with our light, in private. There's a lot of powerful work that happens in private. This beautiful song that's being sung to the dragon at this moon in the eighth house of loss, of saying goodbye. There's also some other support which feels something a bit more like bravery too. So as, lo as well as the sun and the moon in Sagittarius, there's also Mars, the sword and the shield. And they are also in support with another asteroid in Aries right now, the asteroid Chiron. And I'm sure that I've told you the story a thousand times, the mythology of the wounded healer, the one that spent their life learning and healing as best they could, putting their message out into the world or learning about plant life, learning about the healing properties of nature, salving the wounds of others and how when it came to their own wound, it was impossible for them to heal it alone. So Mars is in support of Chiron right now in your eighth house of grief, of intermingled resources, of loss. It feels doubly sincere, feels doubly powerful. 
I think that there'll be a lot of great ceremonies enacted at this new moon. And hopefully those that are inclined will learn about Sagittarius, learn about Chiron, learn about the links between those two. I often ascribe the significations of Chiron to the personality of Sagittarius. And I've known a lot of Sagittarians. They're all seeking. They're all wanting to learn, wanting to grow, wanting to understand, wanting to believe in something. And for that, I admire each and every one of them. So your fourth house, your eighth house, two very private, areas of the chart. There might be some feelings around grief in relationship to your ancestry at this time. Virgo rising and that's okay. That's what the candles are for. That's why we light them. There's something that I wanted to talk about in regard No, that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to get you some tarot. said it for me. The way that some folks are speaking to each other right now is really hurtful. You can see that the lovers is in reverse. And so when I think about the lovers, I do think about Gemini. When I think about conversation, like that Gemini full moon just gone, I think about the toing and froing of information, the different opinions that can sometimes occur inwardly, the way that we relate to ourselves, and also in the external world. I think about the power of the mirror when I think about Gemini, and that can work in a beautiful, beautiful rhythm when talking about things like love and talking about things like care and understanding, it can also be harsh when it's met with conflict and agitation. And sometimes folks mirror ourselves back to us and it can be really difficult to look at. And sometimes we mirror them back to themselves and that can be really difficult to look at as well. So what we have here is this feeling of like, there might be a sense that you are crying out, like where's the empathy? You can see that the king of water is upside down. And so normally there'd be a great capacity for empathy and for understanding. But when it's upside down, there's, it feels cut off, that there is no, there's no care being shown. There's a coldness, perhaps, with the king of water reversed. Cold water, icy, cruel. What's lovely on the other side, though, is a real sense of grounding and a real sense of reality. There's someone here that has got a lot to say and a lot of knowledge. And perhaps they're not being as conversational as the others. Perhaps you can feel their solidity, though. You can feel that they're really here and present and aware and come from a place of experience. I like to think in some ways, Virgo rising, that this might be something that you can emulate too. When it comes to your fourth house, which is where we're making root wishes, when it comes to your root system, your ancestry, you providing a safe space of your own where you can be yourself, where you can provide support and guidance and comfort for other people. This feels, because it's earth as well, you know, this is you. Virgo is an earth sign. The king of pentacles is an earth sign as well. There's something kind of stoic about this individual as well. They've got more than enough to share around and they do it freely and they do it to whoever needs 
that support. They're really generous and not in a frivolous way or not in a way that gives them a bolst, a bolstering feeling of their, in their ego, but they give it. Especially when met with cruelty. What's creeping up is this purity of emotion. So the king of water is reversed, but the page of water is bolt upright. This could be someone young. This could be a new relationship. This could be a fresher sort of um, angle. Um, Hope. This could be a new friend. This could be a child. Whoever this person is, they were raised with their emotions at the forefront of their mind. Their emotional literacy was with them from birth. They were raised by folks that talked about their feelings and had a really great relationship with their feelings. That might not be your experience when you think about your fourth house in times gone by, but you've got to remember the fourth house is um, interactive. If we come from instability in our fourth house, we get to create our own fourth house. We get to lay down our roots and find our home and we get to build from there and we get to keep that front door open to anyone that needs it. There's power in that. When you can say to someone, you come to me when you need me, I'll be here for you. I've always been here for you. There's real power in that. In the face of feeling uh, dejected or in the face of not... being not being heard of people withholding their emotional investment or or maybe un- incapable of connecting with that that can sometimes be the mirror that happens too you can see someone sort of like well i know exactly what you're feeling but you're just not con- you can't connect to it it's impossible and of course when you can speak so clearly and freely about that feeling you know that you are capable of that too sometimes we all dissociate we all separate our emotional selves from a situation to deal with it there's some folks that are really really good at it i think about cancer when i think about the water cards water signs but i think about cancer as far as the bravery of emotion We're coming up to a Cancer full moon two weeks after this Sagittarius new one. So this will be the moment also when Chiron stations direct. So we will be talking about this unconscious wounding. Maybe somewhere along the line you can think about the year 2019, maybe 2018 as well. But Chiron entered Aries for a couple of months in 2018 and then was there full time in 2019. We don't always feel the effects of everything at all times, but there might be a story that you can start to unravel for yourself in relationship to the pain of your eighth house, the pain of having to say goodbye, the pain of your resources and the obligations that you feel that you're in, what you're obliged to as opposed to what you want to invest your time and resources into. It doesn't have to be so clear-cut as like a line in the sand, Virgo rising. Not at all. But it's definitely this new moon in Sagittarius is your moment to light your candles and to know that there is a place for you where you will be welcome. There is a home waiting for you and you're going to play a part in that creation of that home And you're going to leave that door open for whoever needs to come in because that's what you do. That's the way that you roll. These feelings of isolation or rejection are painful, babe. And I apologize if that's what's happening for you at this time. But know how generous you are and know how generous you are will be it's in you you're an earth sign you can't get around that the mirror is can be some people can't look in the mirror long 
period, there's periods in my life where I, I can't bear it. There's also periods in my life when it's being shown to me through the behaviours and actions and words of other people. And I react and then I think to myself, oh, that's me as well in some way. Home. Light a candle for home, Virgo rising. I love you. If you're still here with me, put a horse in the comments, won't you, in honour of Chiron and all of our collective unconscious wounding, our potential and opportunity and invitation to heal, and also for Sagittarius, for the one that does hope, that does have faith, that believes in the power of candlelight. I'll be with you in two weeks. We're going to speak about the full moon in Cancer, as I said, the day that Chiron stations direct. Um, you can... Subscribe to this channel at buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby. You can throw some money in the tip jar there. You can get, go to my website, umaruby.com, and book yourself in a place for me to read your birth chart. They look something like that. And you can also send me an email at u-r-o-k at umaruby.com if you'd like to arrange a reading for a loved one. It is gift-giving season, so if you wanted to give the gift of Uma you'd be invited to do that. We can organize it via email. Much love to you, Virgo Rising. Take care of yourself. Home is where your heart is. And that's the truth. <laughs>